WHIP Radio in Philadelphia. It's the national championship game tonight. Villanova is trying to party like it was 1985 all over again as Villanova will play UNC tonight at 919, trying to get another national championship. And now joining us as a member of that 85 team in Dwayne McLean. Dwayne, it's Zach Yell back here in Philly. Thanks for a few minutes, and how are you, my friend? I'm well, Zach. How's everything going? Well, we're doing great, and we can't wait for the game tonight between Villanova and UNC. And my dad actually produced Rolly Massimino's radio show uh, back in the day when Rolly was at um, Villanova, and he always would tell me about those legendary uh, Sunday night pasta nights and how Rolly would have a big-time family atmosphere. It must be nice to connect back with some of that Villanova family this weekend in Houston, right? Yeah, it is. With Jay Wright being one of Rolly's assistants, um, Again, Jay has welcomed the 85 class and, you know, fly of going over players into the family. And it's going to be exciting tonight. And we had Chuck Everson on the show um, last week, and he was telling us how those players, Jay's current players, really embrace you guys. Just as an alum that won a championship for that university, what does it mean after all these years that guys like Daniel and Shefu and Ryan Archidiacono still want to talk to you guys and continue that family atmosphere at Villanova? Oh, I mean, it's fantastic. Those guys appreciate and they pay respect to the tradition of Villanova basketball. They understand the work that was laid down before them, and it's nice to see those guys taking it to the next level. And you see that team the other night, uh, the way they shot up against Oklahoma. That had to bring back some memories from the national championship game when you guys shot 22 out of 28 from the field, right? Oh, yeah, they shot the ball extremely well. But more importantly, I thought the effort they put at the defensive end just took Oklahoma out of everything they wanted to do. I mean, they've been playing phenomenal defense, and if they continue that, I, I got a good feeling they'll be national champs at the end of the day. How'd you guys shoot so well back on that night going up against that Georgetown team? Well, Georgetown was a familiar foe. You know, as great as they were, we had played them twice that year. So we were familiar with Patrick Ewing and the great coach, John Tom. And we had two competitive games during, you know, with them during the season. So it was just a matter of, of, you know, execute our offense and um, know, know what shots to take and what shots not to take. They're a tremendous defensive team, so you have to be very patient and very careful, and uh, we worked up to our advantage. Well, you guys win that game, but I want to take you back to before the game. 31 years ago, uh, it was uh, April 1st. I know tonight's game is going to be April 4th, but just take us through some emotions that those Villanova players are experiencing right now as they have to wait for that national championship game. I, I tell you right now, those, the guys are focusing on their assignments. Uh, coaches have gone over the scouting reports. Coaches have spent numerous hours watching film. These guys have deciphered their, their assignments, and they are focusing on what they need to do. And what's good about it is Jay's keep telling these guys to have a positive mindset. Sometimes you can go into big-time games thinking not to screw up. But just the opposite, Jay wants these guys to envision themselves being successful. What was that feeling like at the end of the game? Because you guys were such enormous underdogs, and you guys found a way to go out there and shoot the best that you guys have probably ever shot as a team and, and, and win that game. When you finally slay that Georgetown team, just what are those emotions at the end of the game when you fall on the basketball? Oh, just knowing that you had accomplished your goal. You know, we went to the Final Four not hoping to win one game, but, you know, we were wanting to win two. And, you know, regardless of who the great opponent was, once that clock expired, man, it was just, you know, euphoria. Just guys happy and just hugely, hugely proud of, of what we achieved. How many times have people brought up in the last few weeks uh, uh, Bridges falling on the basketball and just comparing that situation to when you fell on the basketball? Yeah. Uh, I, uh, I think it's gone viral. Uh, but, again, it's, it's not a bad thing to be, you know, to relate to. Bridges is a very good kid, very, very good friend of mine. Actually, we used to live near each other in Devon. Pennsylvania before I moved to Florida. It's just nice to see a good young man uh, do something so positive. And we're spending a few more minutes with Dwayne McLean from the 85 Villanova National Championship team. Villanova trying to win another national championship tonight as they battle up against UNC. Uh, in that championship game up against Georgetown, a big turning point was right at halftime, Chuck Everson got slapped in the face. What do you recall about that situation, and how much did that really motivate the team to go on out there in the second half and prove a point? Yeah, Ali Cole was playing a very competitive first half, and Georgetown uh, showed their frustration late in the first half uh, by Reggie Williams taking a swing at Chuck Emerson. Coach Massimino saw it, and uh, he took that motivation to the locker room and just let us know, you know, just because we're playing well, don't let anyone intimidate you. They're trying to use their physical intimidation right now, and uh, I think we use that as fuel to just go out and play basketball in the second half. 
And also, earlier in that season, it was the last regular season game, you guys got blown out by Pittsburgh. Coach Massimino pulled the starters. Just taking a look back at that all these years later, how big of a turning point was that Pittsburgh uh, game? Because you ended up coming back in the Big East tournament and beating them. Yeah, yeah, that's exactly right. I think the message Coach Massimino was giving us there is, you know, as seniors, we had been to the Final Eight twice already, you know, and myself, Ed Pitney, and Gary McClain. And uh, he didn't want us to take it for granted playing our last college game. So, yeah, at halftime, right after halftime against that Pittsburgh game, our last game in the regular season, he pulled his starting five. It was a nationally televised game as well. And it was embarrassing. And he let us know at that time that the program was bigger than any one of the individuals. So we took that to heart. Had the, was fortunate enough to play Pittsburgh the very next game in the Big East tournament and beat them. And then, unfortunately, we ran into a hot Georgetown, a hot uh, St. John's team again, who had beat us three times that season. And also, uh, Coach has a legendary speech when it was in that Elite Eight run up against UNC, and he came into the locker room and he said, hey, if uh, I knew you guys were going to play like this, I would have just sat home and ate a big bowl of pasta with uh, some white clam sauce. Why do you think Coach said that to you? Because in that spot, you wouldn't think a coach uh, to be talking about pasta. You would expect him to talk a little bit about X's and O's. Exactly, and I think that's what threw us for a loop. We thought he would come into the locker room um, all right, you know, we were down seven. We weren't playing well against Carolina. And he understood that the reason why we weren't playing well is because we had been in that position before, you know, twice before, to advance to the Final Four, and it didn't happen. And he just, I guess, took our minds off of basketball and told us what he really was failing, you know. He would rather have a big date, play the pasta with clam sauce. There's, you know, nothing more than that he wanted. And we just looked at each other like, is this guy going nuts? I mean, what's going on here? But what it did was, it was like a pin just popped all the pressure in the room. And ultimately, he told us, guys, just go out and play Virgil basketball in the second half, and we'll be okay. So enough, we came out, and we blew him out the second half. As we're spending a few more minutes with Dwayne McLean, who joins us on the hotline right now, WHIP Radio, back in Philadelphia. You've seen this Villanova team for a bunch of years, and you know this core the last few years. They didn't meet the expectations nationally, losing in that first weekend. Just what do you think makes this group different than from the teams of uh, the last three years? I think their the resilience, number one. Number two, their experience. Uh, Ryan Achidinacchio and, and Daniel Chessel, these guys have been here before. They've been in the tournament, they've been number one seeds, and they've got bounced early. And knowing that as a senior, this is your last opportunity at this, uh, these guys are all locked in, they're focused, and it doesn't surprise me that you know they're representing going over in the national championship game tonight. Take a look at this matchup tonight. I think a big uh, battle is going to see how Villanova is able, uh, going to be able to defend the front court of UNC. How do you think that battle goes down as guys uh, like yeah. Oshefu and Reynolds uh, will be called upon you know, greatly tonight? <laughs> Talk about the deja vu. We are the exact same thing of 31 years ago <laughs> with the Boston speech. You know, their front line was was Brad Doherty, who's a seven footer, Joe Wolf, who's a six ten guy, uh, Martin, Boo Martin, was another seven footer, Poxon, another six ten guy, and myself being six six, Hal Presley six seven, Ed Pickney six nine. We are the exact same thing. No one won't be in a matchup with their front line, and I think we all know what happened that game. Really, with this team right now, uh, you know, they were number one team in the nation. You, you guys were, you know, a pretty darn good team back in 85, but you were the, the eighth seed in the tournament. Uh, when you take a look back, are there any other similarities that you see between your group and, and, and this current group? I, I know it's a little bit different with the seeding, but do you see any other similarities? Uh, yeah, what I most uh, recognize is these guys are playing for each other, and they're not taking possessions off. And that similarity, I think, has, has carried over well this year. They're playing extremely hard. Uh, if one guy gets beat on defense, another guy is over to help, and the rotations are there. They're really playing well connected. And that's the most similar thing I see. You know, we were inside out team. We focused on getting the ball to Ed Pitney. And when Ed Pitney wasn't there, that left myself or Hal Jensen or Hal Presley open. You know, so I, I, I focus, and we were God orientated like this current club. And we, you know, we couldn't shoot the ball from the perimeter like this current team. But you know, we our bread and butter was Ed Pickney in the paint, and uh, we figured if we kept feeding the elephant, you know, we'll all be okay. And sure enough, this team does it so well at the defensive end, and their guard play is tremendous. But what I see similar again is how they are committed to each other defensively and offensively, not minding sharing the ball, and um, they're there to help each other. 
And it really did take a big monkey off their back when they beat Iowa because you just saw the scene in the locker room after the game. Jay Wright came in with the big fist pump, and I believe that really set the tone for the rest of this tournament because you, you talk about family, you talk about confidence. They're just a real loose team right now, and, and I believe the coach set the tone after that Iowa game. Do you agree with that? Uh, yeah, of course. Jay is definitely the captain of that ship, and everyone else is following suit. And you see, you saw the exuberance he expressed after that game. And now it's like the kids are playing with house money. They know if they continue to play hard, if they continue to execute. Uh, I think we'll be celebrating again a little bit later on tonight. Wrapping up with Dwayne McLean, who joins us as he's in Houston getting ready for the national championship tonight. As he'll be watching this one as a spectator, did win one with that 85 club. I think one of the most underrated players in the tournament, and he's been having a massive uh, tournament, has been the play of Chris Jenkins. It's going to be interesting to see how UNC is going to guard that stretch forward tonight, Dwayne. Yeah, they're going to have to put a big guy on him, which I think Chris will have the advantage on the perimeter. And, uh, again, keep in mind, Chris played the post his four years in high school. So it's going to be a very interesting matchup to watch. So take me through who you're watching the game with tonight. I know you'll be in the building. Who are some of your teammates that you'll be watching with? Oh, uh, Coach Massimino's coming in town with Ed Pickney and Hal Jensen, you know, Hal Presley, Conley Brown, Chuck Everson, uh, Brian Harrington, you know, Nova Nation from Class of 85 is well represented. And how has it just been? Give us a little bit of the perspective from the scene down there. I run into those Nova Nation fans, and uh, they're still remembering you after all these years. Yeah, they're excited. They're excited. We're all excited. I mean, this team has put us into a frenzy, and uh, we want to make the most out of this opportunity. It doesn't come every day that a college team gets to go to the Final Four, So, particularly Villanova University. So this is the fourth time in the school history. We just want to make the most of this opportunity. Well, hopefully you get to relive 85 tonight in the year of 2016. Dwayne McLean, we appreciate a few minutes. Thanks so much. Thank you very much, and go Cats.